LB crew, it's your girl LB back again with another video and today I got another one. Now wait, welcome back to the channel guys and if you are new, hey, today we are going to be watching a music video but we will be watching something a little different and we'll get into that later on in the video. But how are you guys doing today? Let's do a mental check in with all these songs about killing each other. How are y'all feeling? Wanna know about me? I've had two nightmares. Already, I'm an empath, so I don't know what that if that has if that directly correlates to why I'm having nightmares about this music. But I'm enjoying it. It's a great series. We have a lot of music that I still need to go through, and I love, love, love the feedback. Of course, you guys know that. So keep adding songs to the list that you guys think I should react to. We're starting off with the East Coast rappers. Right now, we're doing a lot of K Flood, D Dang. We've gotten into Yes G's. We've gotten Shy E K. We've gotten C Blue, Nasty Flog, what's his name, what's the lead really, all of them. Like we're, we're, we're touching bases with everyone's side. So if you are ready for today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let's get this video rolling. Okay, so the video that we will be watching today is not a music video as I stated before. It is the Bronx War. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. OGs, YGs, and Seb side. I hope I said the sub side correctly. This video is about seven minutes long. Whoa, that's long. This is gonna be a long one for us. I really hope this allows me to fully understand what's going on and y'all will be here with me to see my reaction to seeing if I can actually understand this stuff. So I'm excited if you are. The Bronx is a wild place. It's the borough with the most crime and is well known for gang activity. The Bronx drill sound is on the rise and is fueling the deadly war between three gangs, the OGs, the YGs, and Sev side. Let's get straight into this crazy beef. Brooklyn was getting attention for its drill scene, but the Bronx is coming with a whole new sound that's starting to make waves. K Flock is one of the hottest rappers from the Bronx right now, racking up millions of plays on songs like Being Honest and PSA. Bronx drill may have the same bass lines and hard flow as Brooklyn and UK drill, but it has its own unique sound that's influenced by classic New York hip hop. Most of the beats have classic samples laced in with distorted 808s that gives the music a different vibe than drill from other areas. K Flock has been riding away with his new sound and has been building a buzz over the past few months. But his come up ain't just been all success. He also suffers from the pain and loss that comes with the street life, losing many friends to gun violence. K Flock hopped off the curb at a young age and was on the block at like 12 years old. He started rapping because of his homie Dougie B, who is also a rapper and has been featured on multiple tracks. K Flock's first official track was a remix of the 22G song, Licky Gang Freestyle, which he titled FTO. 22G's then gave K Flock a shout out in a recent interview, showing love to the Bronx drill movement. In August 2021, he remixed Siggy Black's song, Dishonest, and called it Being Honest. That track quickly racked up millions of views and earned mm, him a feature from really G Herbo. Good. There's also rumors that he recently signed a seven figure deal and he's in a good position to take over the Bronx rap scene. But behind all of K Flock's success is a deadly war that involves his own family members. He's from a blood set around East 187th Street in a hood known as Sevside. Sevside is made up of Mac Baller Brims and Sex Money Murder, and they cool with the rolling 80s Crips. Sevside beats with other gangs in the area, including the OGs or Original Goons and the YGs or Young Gunners. At first, these two was the same gang and controlled a few different projects around Cortland Ave, not far from Sevside. But one of the founders of the YGs crossed over another top member, so the dudes in his hood split off to form the OGs. Today, the YGs are one of the most hated gangs in the Bronx and they beef with almost everyone. One of the YGs main rappers, named D Thang, is K Flock's blood cousin. The two rappers have been dissing each other back and forth. D Thang shocked the whole hood by dropping a Chicago style drill track called Talking Facts, where he disrespects dead ops from damn near every gang. Where he dis disrespected dead ops from damn near every gang. Yeah, cause that one, I heard that one. That one was some, what is he doing type. Even me being from the West Coast, that was some, what is he doing? I don't know who you was talking about at the time, but yeah. YG's beef with, but the beef ain't start with rap. It began with multiple murders, followed by threats in music and on social media. In July 2021, a 19-year-old rapper who went by the name Ty Swish was shot in the head in the lobby of his apartment building. He ran outside after getting shot, but had been hit in the eye and quickly collapsed. A family friend and her two kids found him unconscious outside the building. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was dead at the scene. 
Witnesses say the gunman fled in a dark colored four door sedan, but was never identified. Friends and neighbors said Ty Swish was a good kid who never got in trouble, but he was allegedly from sex money murder and they would quickly even the score for his death. A few days later, 13 year old Jerry and Elliot was chased down and killed outside the Angels Cafe in the Belmont neighborhood of the Bronx. Jerry had just graduated from junior high and was turning 14 later that month. But even though he was young, he already claimed to be from the rolling 80s Crips. He had already got arrested eight times for robbery and assault and spent time in juvie. A friend of Jerry's said the Crips put him on when he was 10 years old and that she tried to warn him about the lifestyle, but he ain't listen. 10 years old? What do you, what do you need the, what do you need this for at the age of 10? What can they provide to you? Huh? What are they providing to you at the age of 10? I don't understand. This is making me, this is stressing me out even more, understanding the background of all of these gangs. The murder was captured on surveillance footage and showed Jerry and walking down the street with a friend. A black sedan is seen driving up alongside him, then coming to a stop. A mad shooter then hops out and shoots at both of them. His friend ran away, but Jerry and falls and then crawls into a local cafe. He got shot in the legs and the chest and was rushed to the hospital, but later pronounced dead. Police think Jerry and death was payback for killing Ty Swish. They don't know if he was the killer, but they believe he was there at the time of the murder. Just a few hours after Jerry and got chips, the ops got their revenge and a 16 year old got killed and police think it was a payback hit. On Sunday, July 11th, a 16 year old rapper named Rod G's was shot while getting into an Uber. Rod G's was from the 800 YG's and the shooting is believed to be retaliation for the murder of Jerry and Elliot. Rod G supposedly made fun of Jerry and death on social media right after it happened and the get back was immediate. He was on his way to the studio when two men on scooters pulled up and started dumping shots into his Uber. The whole thing was captured on the driver's dash cam and quickly went viral on social media. The rapper got shot once before, but survived. His mom said he was trying to turn his life around and was focusing on his music career, but he didn't get that chance and instead became another casualty in this deadly war. But the case is still active and they both minors, so there ain't too much public info available. With so many deaths on all sides, the beef between the YGs, OGs, and Sev side was really heating up. On August 16th, K Flock dropped the track Is He Ready, where he disses multiple rival rappers, including his own cousin, D Thang. In the first verse, he says, Boy, ask my ops, it could get ugly. I could do shh, like Ice did Sunny. This is referring to the classic film Paid in Full. In the movie, Mitch, one of the main characters played by Makai Pfeiffer, has a younger brother who gets kidnapped for ransom. Mitch tries to get the money, but he gets killed by Rico, played by Cameron, who steals the drugs to pay Sonny's ransom. Sonny gets killed as a result and come to find out, he was set up by his own uncle, Ice, who was mad at Mitch for kicking him out of the house. So in this bar, K Flock sends a shot directly to his own cousin, D Thang, and lets him know he's not above setting him up. The song was big in New York and even got played on Hot 97. So you can probably guess how the ops felt about this. D Thang quickly hopped on social media and gave his thoughts on the bar saying, can't wait to see Auntie now. A few weeks later, Another rolling 80s member who was affiliated with K Flock got murdered broad day. The victim was 16 year old rapper Nas Rolla. He was killed after two men hopped out of a Honda Accord and popped him in the head and chest in Seth Side's hood. Police said that Nas Rolla had a long criminal history and got arrested 18 times already, including 10 felonies dating back to May 2017. He was recently arrested for gun possession and was fighting three other open gun cases. After his death, D Thing would hop on Instagram and sneak this Nas Rolla, who was his cousin K Flock's right hand man, suggesting he might have got set up. Right around the same time Nas Rolla was killed, D Thing dropped Talk Facts, which is pretty much the Bronx version of Who I Smoke, where he disses all his ops, both alive and dead. On the track, he samples the song Somebody That I Used to Know by Got Ye and throws a sub at a different op in almost every bar. Some disses include Dougie Got Shot, but he's still in recovery, sending shots at K Flock's homie, Dougie B. He also says, come on, CJ, you see me when I ain't see you. You ain't even make a move. So how the f when you see me, you gon' shoot. In this bar, he takes shots at another rival rapper from Cortland who dissed D Thing on the track Kidnap Who after D Thing said he was gonna kidnap Booba Savage, who was also featured on the track. Later, he raps, Jiggy Man, aka Shot Eck, dumbass got hit. That's word on my mother, they never do shit. Here, he's talking about a rapper named Shot Eck who's from the OGs and known to go by the name Jiggy Man. So, it looks like Bronx Drill is following the same pattern as Chicago and the UK. Rappers diss each other in songs and follow it up with real violence. What's really crazy is that a lot of them are under 18 and still in high school. 
So really, they don't fully understand the consequences that come with the lifestyle they live in. Hopefully, they're paying attention to how hot it's getting in O Block and they cool it down before it's too late. But with so many lives lost on both sides, it's hard to see an end in sight. I couldn't really, I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't make pauses in that because it's just more of a me understanding. But what I get from this now, which is going to give me a, a very, very, very different view on the rest of these songs on this list. All of these are kids under 18. Oh, y'all for sure don't understand the consequences of your actions. Like. I understand like I don't I don't think y'all get I don't understand well the killing the whole the whole icing each other out thing like you guys are at a very young age do you understand like you're taking someone's life and that person won't be able to come back that I don't understand and death with me is very um touchy I don't like death in any way shape or form all y'all want to do is kill each other ah! <sighs> make it make sense I'm definitely gonna keep listening to the songs, but jeez, can y'all just like lay off of it just a little bit? I understand y'all keep trying to get get back and hit each other and all of that. Can't y'all take a break? I have a talk. Drink some coffee. Go maybe rap about something a little more happy. I don't know. Now I really understand where everything is coming from. I understand a lot of the different shots that they were taking at each other now because that makes sense. I never thought of the paid in full one, but now that also makes a lot of sense. What did you think? Make sure you comment it down below because you know I want to know. And if you liked today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you comment, share, hit the bell button so you never miss a video. And subscribe to the LB Crew because if you're not subscribed to the LB Crew, what are you doing? Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and I will see you on next video. Bye!